morning everybody it is 1 30 a.m uh march 30th 2020 can't sleep so figured i'd share some more insight about the current outbreak that is in um that is currently happening in california that's the new hot spot so let's see what's going on Let me tell you guys what's going on because I just watched this video and uh, I just threw on this shirt just to get this mic on because I got to show you guys what, what. That was spiking in California. LA's mayor predicted this could be a week of a massive surge. Remember Gavin Newsom, like so many others, being desperately in ventilators. This is 170 arrived in Oregon in a recent shipment. Governor Newsom telling us the state is now reaching out to famous billionaires for help. ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Guthrie, in California. Tonight, major cities in America bracing for that onslaught of patients. In California, the number of ICU patients more than doubling over the past 48 hours. The number of cases surging in the nation's most populous state past 5,000, along with the lag time in test results. Average right now of our commercial labs, seven days yesterday. Average. Uh, we're seeing some as many as 12 days. Uh, that's unacceptable. Los Angeles, the epicenter. With more than 1,800 cases and more than 30 deaths, the mayor warning LA could look like New York within days. Here in Silicon Valley, it's March 30th. LA is going to look like New York within, within, within days. Within this week, there's going to be an outbreak. 30 deaths. We have 60 deaths in Florida as of right now, and we aren't even close to the population that LA has. You know, it's funny. Did you see the drone footage they just showed? Beaches are all lined up. Um, I'm going to have a tone in these videos more towards of, of being upset with the public right now. Honestly, I'm upset with what's going on. Everybody should be home. Everybody should be doing everything possible for this. This is the plague. Herculean effort to get mothballed ventilators from the federal government stockpile up and running. This hive of activity you see behind me, every one of these technicians is actually fixing one of these faulty ventilators. The governor calling in every favor to secure I want, protect. I wonder what's faulty about them now. Is it something in shipping or is it if people could fix them on the spot? What happened? Where are you sourcing 101 around the world? I mean, quite literally. Whoever's got them. Because everybody's having supply chain problems. We got Richard Branson taking a 747 from Hong Kong. Thank you, Richard. I'm in the Bay Area. We've got Elon Musk that was able to get 1,200 men out. Thank you. For us I haven't heard any Rothschilds or anybody popping up donating money. Two hours from overseas. I've already distributed 31.7 million N95 masks just in the state. I ordered, not making this up, we have on order, we wrote a check for 101 million. At the start of the crisis, the federal stockpile only had 13 million such masks. Texas tonight reporting a dramatic spike in cases, 500 in the last 24 hours. The governor announcing major travel restrictions for anyone arriving from several cities, including New York, New Orleans, and Miami. And Hold up. Nobody has, has labeled Miami as a hot spot whatsoever till this moment right now, live on camera. This is the first time I've heard of anybody looking at Miami as a hot spot. It's the first time Jacksonville got a little write up and has got some notice but it's the first time I'm hearing about Miami and it's from Texas. I, I um Washington wait let me finish what I was gonna say. I wouldn't be surprised if the government is lying to us with the right intentions, not with the wrong intentions. Lying to us to keep us not panicked and, and able to follow the instructions that will get us to safety. And if that is the case, then they're doing the right thing. If panic will cause more lives and they need to lie to us to save lives, then lying is the correct thing to do. And then mentioning Miami right there, being in Texas, and I've never heard of Big Night. I thought the only death in the Miami-Dade County was um, 
one in North Beach, Miami. This is the first time I'm hearing it. So that's interesting. And the first state to grapple with the growing number of dead still without sufficient supplies. We have a desperate need for the testing kits. We have got to mobilize the entire manufacturing base of the United States, like we did in World War II, for things as simple as these testing kits. And tonight, the Army brought in... I did, I did just hear that. I think it was Novavax or Gilead Sciences, one of those, one of the big guys, just came out with a test kit that if uh, will come back positive within 15 minutes, but negative in 45 minutes. So I don't really know what that means exactly. So you, if that, if that to me, that says it's 16 minutes, that means you're fine. But I guess after 30 minutes, it could still come up. But in 15 minutes, it could give you a result. Convert the cavernous convention center outside Seahawks Stadium, normally home to car shows, to an overflow hospital for non-COVID-19 patients. All right, Matt Gutman joins us now from Los Angeles. And Matt, I know you have an update on Louisiana, but also California's governor says the state is on a war footing and is nervous about Louisiana. I'm nervous about Louisiana for the same reason I'm nervous about Florida. They have very, very poor areas and a lot of project areas and a lot of prisons. And in areas like that, oh my God, I pray. I pray for prisoners right now. I really do. Most of them are innocent, statistically. So imagine being locked down and two cells down, guys dying from the most infectious disease we've had in a while. Reaching out to get more medical professionals to the front lines. That's right, Tom. He's calling this a wartime mentality. He says there are thousands of ICU beds in the state, but not enough doctors and nurses to tend to them. So they're graduating doctors and nurses early. They're changing the job descriptions of some. They're retraining others. And to that sliver of good news out of Louisiana, the governor there saying they're seeing a decrease in the rate of infections. Still, he says the state is playing catch up with the but, By the way, these delays are, are on them. It's not on my side. I checked uh, twice. Stop. We will take any good news we can get it. All right, Matt. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking. So here we go. We got Louisiana with a huge population of people that live in projects that have nowhere to go and no resources and we got LA the third largest economy in the world I know that for a fact is having the biggest outbreak the third largest economy in the world goes on to a lockdown that means we're all on lockdown we already got the first one it's unbelievable it's unbelievable. It makes my um, opinion of people not following the rules being even more selfish. Seven minutes ago. Again, it's March 30th. It's 1.38 in the morning. 722,000 people are infected with the coronavirus case. The modeling put together by Dr. Burks. And These news outlets are such liars. They got to advertise that they're <laughs> telling the truth. Actually, all of that, they just made an advertisement pleading with the public, please trust us. Please. We are not liars. You guys are all a bunch of, all of them. The modeling put together by Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci and our other top. Dr. Fauci. I mean, we have, and these people are amazing. The healthcare experts who in this country are the best in the world. They demonstrate that the Mitigation measures we are putting in place may significantly reduce the number of new infections and ultimately the number of fatalities. I want the American people to know that your selfless, inspiring, and valued efforts are saving countless lives. You are making the difference. The modeling estimates 
that the peak in death rate is likely to hit in two weeks. So, I'll say it again. The peak, the highest point of death rate, remember this, is likely to hit in two weeks. Please. Nothing would be worse than declaring victory before the victory is won. I don't even will be. This will never be a victory. Therefore, the next two weeks and during this period, it's very important that it you know, some people also, they're brushing this off like it's nothing. And you know what? There's 33,000 deaths. There was only 5,000 people who lost their lives on 9-11. I'm from New York. I was, uh, I was young when it happened, but I'll never forget it. And uh, that would... Could you, ima could you imagine having six 9-11s on one day? I mean, that's how I'm looking at it. That's the that's the statistic you run in my head. 9/11 was devastating. I had friends lose family members, and it was horrible, horrible. I I, I thought that was the biggest catastrophe I was ever going to see in my life. I saw the, the the tsunami, that was big. We've had major catastrophes. This is not even comparable. This is like this 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 virus is the Michael Jordan of viruses. This is insane. Strongly follow the guidelines. Have to follow the guidelines that our great vice president holds up a lot. He's holding that up a lot. He believes in it so strongly. The better you do, the faster this whole nightmare will end. Therefore, we will be extending our guidelines to April 30th to slow the spread. And this time, you people better listen. They should, they should, yeah, they should put, put you in jail if you're not going to listen at this point. He's murdering people. I just froze my computer. Great. Anyway. Oh, no, that was the end of the video. So 12 minutes ago, is uh, Trump concedes U.S. coronavirus death toll could be 100,000 or more. Pretty sure at that point, Jesus, Dr. Fauci said that he sees two million affected and uh, 200,000 dying. If, if, if Trump is already noting that 100,000 people are going to die, that's going to happen. It's up to us again to keep that number as low as possible. And what he keeps saying there could be more than 2 million cases if we did absolutely nothing. And we're doing as much as we possibly can. So it, to, to get these numbers, you have to start with the largest range. I understand that. And that number is, so, so saying 2 million, it's, ne it's probably never going to hit that number. That's saying like if people, you know, are, are coughing on each other on purpose and just doing their life like whatever but on the contrary we're trying as hard as we can so if he's saying in the um in the projections they're putting in two million cases you know that's uh that's a that's a good thing that means that realistically hopefully we're around i don't know a million Tell you another thing though, I have a huge new respect for South Korea. They are on it. Let's check this out. China's local epidemic blocked. The country is now blocked as the daily number of new cases remains in the low double digits. But meanwhile, the chance for a second wave of infections imported from other countries remains high. Yeah, that's called hedging your bets. That last, that last line is called, don't blame us for all this. Tokyo cases spike. Okay, oh, Australia closes playgrounds. Australia closes playgrounds in outdoor areas. 
I don't think they're doing that if this is an infection that only can be spread if you're within six feet. I'm just not buying it. And even if so, this thing has got to be... Listen, when the flu season breaks out, they don't tell people stay six feet away from people. And that's a highly contagious... People get it in the office, everybody gets sick, right? This thing is way more contagious than that. Because look at what they're suggesting. No playgrounds. Philippines reports largest gene. 343 new cases of the coronavirus recorded in the Philippines on Sunday. A massive jump which brought the country's total to 1,418. Oh my god, if they lost 71 people with only 1,400 infected, they're, f they're screwed. Oh, here we go. Just to brighten things up, playing with medical supplies crashes in Manila. A plane in which was heading from the Tokyo. All eight people on board were. You know. Sometimes it's tough to believe in you. I'll be honest with you. No, seriously. What the. What's, what was that? I'm gonna do what I could do while I'm here on this earth. And when I get up there, whatever happens, I, I just hope it's a amazing thing because this is tough yeah i'm i'm uh i'm going i was just about to say going for a walk 